I bet you never played an arpeggio like this before. From a scale in one arpeggio? Yes. Welcome to the beautiful world of the heptatonic sweep. Here we go. Hey guitar chamber, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to take a look at a topic that maybe the OG viewers from this channel already know because kind of my first lesson I ever did on this channel was about this topic. But back then nobody knew the fuck who I was so I will try to give this concept a new chance because I really like this concept, I really like the sound of it and I bet it can help you creating new and interesting sweeps. So let's check out the heptatonic arpeggio. A quick reminder, if you want to have the taps and more fingerings, more shapes for a heptatonic arpeggio, then check the link in the description box. There you can download it for free. So the key idea of the heptatonic arpeggio was to play all notes from one scale in one arpeggio. We are achieving this with a little bit of theory and knowledge. So now it's get a little bit naughty, but stick with me, you will understand how this works. So imagine you have a scale, like for example the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So now to create a C major arpeggio, not the scale but the triad out of it, we're taking the root note, which is the C, then the third of the root note, which is the third note of that C in the C major scale, to clarify it as simple as possible, which is C, D, E, and then we're taking the third note of the E, which is the E, F, G in the C major scale, and by that we are creating a triad, our first chord, or when we're playing each note individually, an arpeggio. And now we can stuck on top of that more and more these thirds. For example, the third note of the G in the C major scale is G, A, B. And then the third note of B in the C major scale, again where the B is our one, is B, and I repeat, C, D. So now we have a C major 7, 9 arpeggio, C, E, G, B, D, because the B is in the C major scale, the seventh interval of the C, and the D is now the ninth, and the D is now the ninth. It's not the second, because we are playing at one octave higher than the second, and seven plus two is nine. The same rule now we have with the following intervals, now taking the third note when starting of a D, D, E, F, this is so-called the 11th interval, 7 plus 4 is 11, and then the last note that we're missing in the side of that scale is the A, and we're creating the A by going from the F three notes higher in the C major scale, F, G, A, and there we have the 13, 7 plus 6 is 13. So basically the heptatonic sweep arpeggios are nothing else than 7, 9, 11, 13 arpeggios. But it's sometimes easier said than done and I came up with a certain shape that helps you to play these sweeps especially extremely fluent and extremely easy for someone who is already experienced in the sweeping technique. If you are not experienced in the sweeping technique yet or if you want to improve your sweep technique then I can highly recommend to check out the Den of Sweeping, my big sweep masterclass where I have more than 12 etudes for you prepared to bring you from speed beginner to speed master. I explain every detail of the whole technique and guide you step by step from three string sweeps to four string, five string, six string up to seven string sweep arpeggios. We start in classic and ending extremely more done. So check out the then of sweeping, you will find the link in the description box. So let's take a look at the way how I create that C major 7, 9, 11, 13 arpeggio. And slowly it basically looks like this. And now the cool thing is as well how this shape is designed. And first off we're starting with a really traditional C major shape. 
Now for me it's really important to have two notes on the high and later on as well on the low E notes because we can use those two notes on one string to have something that I call the turning point. We can use this kind of movement by including a little bit of legato in our left hand to switch from down sweep to up sweep. Really, really cool. Now in this shape it's really familiar for everybody who started to learn sevens arpeggios or maybe a little bit of some Frank and Barley licks or something like that. Now we're adding the ninth to it. And we're doing this by hitting it with a pinky on the 12th fret of the D string. So the D string is as well a string where we have two notes on one string. And I already love this kind of shape. You can have a lot of fun, a lot of cool sound with these kind of shapes. Doesn't matter if starting on the E string or maybe on the A string. Really cool shape that is really easy to get under your fingers. All right, but we are not finished here with the ninth. Next up is the 11. And now we can create the 11 and the 13 and as well the octave of our root or the double octave of our root by adding, a tri by adding another triad to our sweep arpeggio. Because when we're taking the notes F, A and C, we have an F major triad. And the cool thing about these shapes that I'm going to show you today is that they are built up out of the 7th 9 arpeggio on the lower strings and then a triad of the 4th degree of that certain scale on the upper bracket of the strings. In this case here on the G, B and E string. So taking the upper part of an F major triad and adding this to uh, this kind, and adding this to the sweep and then we instantly create the heptatonic sweep. And now when you know your intervals you can easily play here all scales that you know, all kind of interesting sounds that you know, as long as they have seven notes inside of their scale. If you don't know the intervals yet then stay tuned and subscribe to this channel because soon I'm going to release the Zen of Music Theory, my online masterclass where I'm going to explain to you the guitar player how theory works, especially designed for guitar players, no notes allowed, only using the fretboard, our musical alphabet, and you have to count to 12, but I think that shouldn't be a problem, right? So stick around to this channel if you want to know more about music theory because more is coming soon. All right, now let's have a little bit of fun with this kind of shape. For example, let's play Lydian. For that we have to transform the fourth, or in this case the 11, to a sharp 11. Awesome. Now let's do Mixolydian, for example. For that we're taking the normal C major 7, 9, 11, 13 arpeggio and now we're transforming the sam now we're transforming the major 7 to a dominant 7. Super awesome. Now we can do also more kind of exotic scales. For example, Mixolydian sharp 11, fourth degree of melodic minor scale. G melodic minor in this case. Or we can do C Mixolydian flat 13, which is the fifth degree of uh, melodic minor scale, F melodic minor for example. Ooh, that sounds really awesome. Now we can do the minor scale as well. For example, C minor scale, we're taking again the C minor, 7, 9, and then putting on top of that the triad, which is based on the fourth degree of that scale C minor, which is in this case F minor, F minor chord. And this F minor triad we're putting on top, on top of C minor 7, 9, and this sounds like that. Now, we, of course, we can do Dorian as well. Just by simply adjusting the minor 6 to the major 6. And we can do Phrygian. Just by taking the 9s and transforming it into the flat 9. Of course, we can do Phrygian dominant as well. I 
and we can have a lot of fun with a lot of scales. Another cool thing that I like of this arpeggio is the articulation because we often divide the lower strings into five notes. One, two, three, four, five. And the upper strings of this arpeggio into three. One, two, three. Which creates that really, really cool five, three kind of sound. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Instead of simply one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. That c this comes because of the nature of the shape that I do a hammer on here on the D string going to the next note, to the second note of the D string. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So it makes rhythmically also a little bit more interesting. Now, for you it is important, I would say, to master these kind of arpeggios, to learn all the shapes from our regular scale, like all the modes shape that I just demonstrated, C major, then the C mixolydian kind of shape, the C lydian, the C minor, C dominant, C phrygian, or even C locrian, which would sound like this. Because then you also have included all the inversions already. So for example, when I take my C major 7 again, I started on the D, I have the D Dorian shape. On the E, I have the E Phrygian shape. On the F, the F Lydian. Oh, sorry. And so on and so on. So playing in versions of this arpeggio is pretty easy because we only have to learn all these seven shapes, which may sound a lot in the beginning, but as soon as you've checked out okay, how the structure of the intervals were and how easy you can go from one scale to the next scale just by adjusting one interval, then you will find out, wait a second, this is actually pretty comfortable and pretty easy to use. So yeah, definitely worth to check out these kind of arpeggios that I don't see that often in the style of certain guitar players. Maybe some modern guitar players like Matteo Mancuso or Tom Quayle or even older guys like Frank Gambale. But this concept was pretty new for me when I discovered this one. And this is something that I love to share with you guys. And I hope you liked this little video as well. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing. I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers! and power your progress. Bye.